All right. So uh, what's been going on in our little sphere? Yeah. So I uh, came across a couple of cool new things that uh, are have landed on the list to try out, the ever-growing list of things to try and, and play around with. Uh, and a couple of not so great things that I figured we could talk about a little bit today. Uh, if you'd like to share my screen, though, I can start out with some of the cool community things I've come across. Uh, yes, sir. All right. I can. And I did. Thank you, sir. That looks good to me. Um, <clears throat> so first thing I, I came across is this Intune Assignments report that utilizes Power BI uh, from Trevor Jones. Uh, so we've talked a lot about... Um, uh, how we can find out what resources are or, or what um, uh, items are assigned to various resources. That's come up, uh, been a topic here on Office Hours a few times in the last couple of months. And uh, uh, Trevor's got a nice way that he put together of actually visualizing uh, this information. So I am looking forward to getting this um up in my lab to uh, to get a, a, a real demo going and see what this uh, visualization looks like. Uh, Trevor's always got some uh, some great solutions here. So uh, he's had some other Power BI reports that we've utilized in the past, and they've been fantastic. So I would encourage you to take a look uh, at this to see if this is something that you want to be uh, reporting on and have a visualization of in your environment. Uh, second thing I came across was from uh, Steve Weiner over at Rubix, had an, a, a short blog post here and some code on how you can bulk update autopilot group tags across a number of enrollment profiles uh, and devices. Uh, so I wanted to share this here as well. There's a couple of snippets of code uh, that you can use to either, here's the first option, change group tag using a list of serial numbers that you might have, or change the group tag using an old group tag as a target. Um, so thinking maybe if you're um, just changing the group tag or you're renaming something, you have a reorganization, or something's happening where you need to change that group tag over, uh, this looks like a, a pretty cool solution here. Obviously not great if you build by the hour and need <laughs> A lot of billable hours, but if you want to get the job That's, done quickly, here we are. Absolutely. Um, another thing that I came across that looked quite interesting, let me just grab the link for it here, is um, Meryl Fernando, who has been highlighted many times here on Office Hours. Um, he and uh, Fabian Bader and um, who's the third person? Uh, Thomas Nonheim uh, put together this uh, solution here called Maester. I believe is some may pronounce that Maester, Master. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Maester. Um, and this is a framework um, that will help you test things like your uh, conditional access policy to see or policies to see that you are following the common practices to see if you have any gaps um, and, and things like that. So I have not had the opportunity to get into this too much because I came across it. I think it was released literally like six hours ago, um, but it looked uh, very cool. Um, so, so you had six hours, so what's your excuse not for? I, I don't have a good one. I really don't. Uh, I, I, you know, this is one of those things that you see some screenshots of it. And by the way, Meryl uh, always is fantastic with these graphics and screenshots, enough to catch your attention and make you want to drop everything and take the six hours to test a, a new thing that he's talking about. So I don't really have a good excuse. Um, it could possibly be to have a real job to do also. Could uh, you know, it, that could be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is absolutely on, on the list. Uh, I hope to talk about it a little bit more here in the uh, near future and see what, uh, see what this can do for us. But it looks very interesting. Um, 
Last but not least, I came across a couple of not so great things <laughs> that uh, we wanted to call out. And I know that you've got some uh, uh, some pointers on, Johan. The first was that uh, Windows 10 uh, updates earlier this year broke uh, connected cache node discovery on enterprise networks. So if that's happening, if your clients can't discover connected cache, what is your recommendation to fix that in the meantime while we wait for a fix? Well, luckily it was, well, luckily or luckily, but it, it was only the the ACP discovery that, that broke down. And there are plenty of other options to specify the cache host. So you can do that with an Intune policy. You can do that with a group policy. You can even do that with a PowerShell script that smacks that registry key in for the your cache host value. Uh, you can use a config manager baseline, uh, Intune remediation script. Uh, if you have our agent, you can use that one too. But long story short, you can at least temporarily populate that value differently until a fix is uh, uh, available. Good to know. That's right. Not the end of the world. No, definitely not. Uh, as long as we have a workaround, that's at least something we can work with. And uh, the the other thing that I came across, I think both of us came across at some point, uh, was last week, I think I mentioned the 23H2 um, security baseline was released in Intune. Um, and put simply, at the moment, if you are managing non-English operating systems, don't use it. Um, as I understand it, I believe, uh, the settings were not, they were using the display name of, of certain things and not the well-known SID. Is that how you understood the issue? Uh, oh, yeah, basically, okay. uh, they, they hard coded in names rather than SIDs, which is a big fat no, no, unfortunately. Definitely. So um, Microsoft is aware of the issue. The Intune support team is aware of the issue. So hopefully we'll see a fix for this uh, soon. But the current recommendation is if you are uh, deploying anything other than managing anything under, other than English operating systems right now, uh, do not uh, assign that baseline. So um, that was what I had for today. How about you? Well, I, I had a, a, a few things that I stumbled across. First, something I know that uh, even if you didn't want to be part of this, you were part of this. Uh, see if I can share my screen here. Uh, not this one here. That's just a query. But this scenario here where you have a config manager database that decides to grow and grow and grow and grow very, very quickly. So Rudy put together a blog post because he was in the exact same scenario where it grew 700 gig in uh, a very short time period. So eventually he pulled together a very, very nice blog post published yesterday here. Uh, his database was growing one gig per minute. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fairly quickly, I'll say. Uh, anyhow, he found out that all the different maintenance tasks can be called as store procedures. Probably not supported, but that's how they're being called. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool, worth mentioning. So this blog post, of course, is among the links that we will share. Yeah, that was not a fun problem to run into uh, by any stretch. Um... So basically, some clients are are sending up some defender logs, uh, and and that's what, at least in in my case, was filling up that that uh, table very, very quickly. <laughs> Wasn't that like four a.m. on a Sunday morning, something like that? Or yes, yes, it was. Uh, the clients were sending those things, and and the database grew from seventy gigs to about two hundred and eighty gigs. Um, not not great. <laughs> not great. Literally overnight, too. All right. Fantastic. Yep. All right. Um, the other one I stumbled across an update was uh, uh, Microsoft themselves, but uh, they have been working on a Windows update distribution port for a good while. It was showcased in one uh, YouTube video earlier this year, and um, I'm delighted to see that it's coming, apparently, in next release of Intune. So... 
That was nice. Now we also had a new release of Power Toys. Uh, version 80 or 0 0.80 was released. Don't remember the, the changes on the top of my head, but if you're using Power Toys, yeah, there is a new version. Then I stumbled across a, in my opinion, pretty shiny little tool. Um, it's a uh, executable, including source code, um, that allow you to run a PowerShell script without a little flashing console. Uh, a lot of folks have been using VPScript to do that before, but since VPScript is slowly going away, you can use this instead. And if your security team has any arguments, well, here's the source code. You can review it to your heart's content, and uh, then we can use it. So uh, apparently, we're still waiting for to <laughs> uh, get it properly signed, because this uh, <laughs> signature had expired, or cert has expired. But anyhow, anyhow. Another thing I stumbled across, of course, was that the corporate sessions for uh, MMS Flamingo has opened. Uh, most of you probably uh, noticed that the one in Minneapolis is sold out, uh, which is fantastic. And I really honored, of course, that they decided to have my birthday <laughs> as the deadline for submissions. Oh. So that is, of course, cool. And uh, something that I just stumbled across and made me shock a little bit and also almost cry a little bit <laughs> at the same time, but it was uh, this one here. I laughed out loud when I saw you retweet this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was the very, uh, not the first, but one of the very first ransomware attacks I was involved in, in you know, fixing up after the fact of rebuilding the infrastructure, this happened to them. Uh, luckily, not all of the backups, but they had two backup servers, uh, one Microsoft and one uh, third party. They had encrypted both of them first before they encrypted everything else. So there was a poor guy that stood in the data center for five days shuffling tape drive after tape drive after tape drive oh. to rebuild all those indexes because the indexes were on those servers too. I, so. I can understand why this is only partially humorous to you then. There's a little bit of trauma behind this meme. Uh, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Uh, let's see. On the more fun part is, of course, that in 2025, it seems that we're getting a new PCI Express standard. I read an article about PCI Express number 7 or version 7 coming up, which is funny because we haven't even received version 5 yet. Uh, so anyhow, the future uh, uh, looks promising. Shuffle around 500 gig per second. It and just to make sure that I'm reading that correctly, that is a large B in GB, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. That is fast. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Yeah. Uh, the trick is going to be finding hard drives that you know keep up with delivering that. Absolutely. All right. And then we have this uh, one here. Um, uh, makes me very happy or made me very happy. Uh, Stefan released a PowerShell module that will take WinGet apps and publish them to Win32 apps in Intia. Mm. So the question is, why is this extra shiny? Well, because WinGet by nature doesn't support peering, but Win32 apps does. So instead of having uh, 4,000 clients downloading the same content from the same server, a few of them can download it and they can share locally, which is much, much quicker. Uh, and speaking of that, um, you, you mentioned the liver optimization earlier. Uh, we have spotted uh, lately uh, that we're starting to see a little bit of a lower peering quality. Uh, across a lot of different uh, customers' organizations. Haven't quite figured out yet why that is, but something I want to 
at least mentioning. Don't be too surprised if you start to see a little bit less peering, a little bit more non-peering. Um, but uh, as soon as I have more information to share, I will. And I stole this query, borrowed, he sent it to me, uh, from Maurice to tap into some of the log analytics data from the past uh, month uh, on one of the tenants here. All right. So, anywho. And of course, uh, finally, uh, we have this one here. Panu tweeted about the new version of the snipping tool. He was very excited about the new drawing options. He was less, less excited about the ruler being missing. Apparently, he was using that one a lot. So he uh, was encouraged by Jen to put in a feedback item on it, which he did. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll get the ruler back uh, without uh, the expense of anything else. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. So that was all I had in terms of news.